beautiful cabin reflection. And all you need for your colors are your primary colors of red, yellow, and blue. And green and brown is nice to have for extras and black and white to highlight and to shadow your paintings. So as you can see, I taped off my canvas so I could get my horizon. It's a little bit below the horizon line. And we're going to start with the sky. I like to start at the top and work my way down. So as you can see, I put my blue on first. It's a darker blue. You can use ultramarine blue or you can use any dark blue. And I like to start that first to get some nice dark color into the sky. The size of the canvas is 8 by 10. So my brush is only small. It's a bristle brush. You can use a, a chiseled edge, a flat brush, synthetic. But it's only a very small brush. It's probably a size 4. If you had a bigger canvas, you would use a bigger brush. You'd probably use um, 11 by 14, use a 1 inch brush. And a 16 by 20, you would probably use a 2 inch brush. Because you want to get that sky covered. And, and in the least amount of time also. Because if your brush is really small, it'll take you a long time to do your, just your sky. So adjust your brush to your can size of your canvas. And as you can see, I am sweeping the colors. I'm sweeping them to give them uh, kind of a, maybe a little bit of a windy look. But um, I put white on there and I still let the dark show through. And as you can see, because I'm working wet on wet, the dark blue lightens up some of the lighter colors, which means now I have at least three values of blues there. So I have three values of blue. I got light, medium, and dark. So as you're painting, you'll keep adding a little more white to the bottom part there because as the sky gets closer to the horizon, it gets really light compared to the top part of the sky. So I'm just moving my brush back and forth and like I say on top I'm not going I'm not going straight across I'm making a sweeping stroke. A lot of people ask me about they have a hard time figuring out brush strokes. Well this is a brush stroke and it's uh, two brush strokes going on there so there's the brush stroke where you go back and forth with long strokes actually it's three and you can go short strokes see and at the top you have a sweeping stroke, which is not a completely straight stroke. It's kind of curved. Now I got a flat brush. And that one is a thin synthetic I'm going to use to lighten up those streaks and those sweeping. Kind of, I guess you could, they would be clouds. So that's three strokes there in that sky. So see how I'm just, uh, I also mist my paint sometimes when it won't move or it gets a bit sticky. You can either add more paint to your brush, but if you add too much paint, then you're going to end up having too much white, say. So rather than add more paint at this point, you can just mist it. So your three strokes were your long strokes, your short strokes, and your sweeping stroke. Okay, and I'm sort of bringing out a little more in the sky, a few little extra clouds there, but I'm still going with the sweeping stroke. Dabbing at it just so it will blend a little bit more, make nice little fluffy clouds there, but don't want them too big because The, the wind is pushing them around. They're probably just going to be faded out. It's 
So if you want to talk about brush strokes, uh, you can see that I'm using a dabbing stroke, dabbing motion, tap, tap, tap. Take your brushes and move them around on a canvas and just see what kind, what way they work and how they work and what you can achieve with a certain brush. That's what you have to do really. You have to experiment with your brushes, see what they do. So I'm just picking up more white and a little bit of red. Just to get a very, very light pink color. It's always nice to add color to your clouds. But you can add yellow to your cloud, your white, to get a nice cloud with a little bit of yellow in it. You could add um, orange, a little bit of red, a little bit of yellow into your white, and you'll get a really pretty orangey color to your cloud. You can add purple, even green. It's okay to, to add whatever colors you want because clouds can sometimes reflect colors from the sky or from anything surrounding them. But if you look up in the sky, you will notice that clouds are mostly, some of them have a purplish tint, a very, very light purplish tint to them. Some are pink. Um, you see a lot of times they are white and a sort of a gray color, bluish gray for the shadow. So we'll keep adding a few clouds down on the bottom here and make them nice and soft and fluffy. But just make a few circles, that's all. Just make circles. Put the paint on the corner of your brush and make these little circles. I'm just going to put that little more white in there. And when I get the white, I just move away from it so I don't destroy it. And I'm just going to add a little more there. All right. So just adding a little more red to my white. Just topping up some of the clouds. There we go. See, that looks nice, doesn't it? Isn't that pretty? It's different. Good. Just going to move into a few more little tops. Hard to know when to stop, isn't it? <laughs> but if you see anything that you want to continue on with, you just go ahead. Just going to add a little cloud up here. So what I did was I just made a bigger cloud up there in the corner, as you can see. So you can put any kind of cloud up there. So I didn't, uh, I didn't stay there for long because uh, there's a lot of things in this painting. You wouldn't think it. It's only small, but there's a lot of detail to be added to this painting. And clouds are nice because you can make up your own clouds. So that's why I'd rather move on and let you decide on what kind of clouds you want there. Maybe you don't even want one there, so don't worry about it. So right now I'm just using my bristle brush. And I use my bristle, bristle brush for grass, for anything that I pounce or, you know, I jump around on. <laughs> I push and push hard. And... Uh, so I tap, tap, tap my green grass. I use some green and burnt sienna to darken it up a little bit. And I just tap, tap, tap my grass. See that? There we go. Just tap, tap, tap. The bristle brush will give you some nice textured grass. You won't get that with a synthetic brush. You can also add other colors if you want to, maybe a bit of blue, a bit of red, you know, just to add some color to your grass. I add a little bit more green just to get it more green. So 
So just keep tapping until you get it all filled in. Pretty simple steps. Just taping that piece off there only just so I can tap in a few more uh, lighter greens at the top there. But make sure that the top part is dry before you put your tape on. There we go. Add a little bit more, a little bit of red, burnt sienna, and green together, and it gives it a nice, probably a bit of yellow just to brighten it up a small bit. As you can see, it's not real bright yet. We're going to do some highlights a little later. Just keep tapping. So I took off the bottom tape, so we can start at the bottom there now. Just took a small flat brush, and when I add a bit of blue to my brush, and I'm going to mark off where I want the grass on the bottom, and I want to have water in the middle so that we can have our have our reflections. So that's so you can put it wherever you want. If you got a bigger canvas, you can make your water bigger if you want to, or you can make your land bigger. It's up to you. And we'll take our bristle brush again and we'll tap into some green and our dark green. We want to get it nice and dark. We always start off with dark in our acrylic painting so you can add highlights to it. Now this is a bit more green than the top one as you can see so I'm going to add a bit more burnt sienna to it. And as you can like I say in watercolor you can put on lights first and put the darks on top because it dries really fast. but I find with acrylics, if you do anything, you start off with the, uh, almost black colors. You know, make sure you got color that is really, really dark, no matter what you do. Unless you want a really bright, say, a really bright flower. So you wouldn't want to add too dark. You would want to add a darker color than your highlights, but it would be the darkest shade first. So the darkest shade don't always have to be almost black depends on what you're painting but with grasses and foliage and trees and just trying to think of other things that you know there's a lot there that you would use for dark underpainting first um, maybe some fur depending on if you're doing a darker fur so we're talking landscapes here so I won't get into animal fur I'm going to be doing a video on how to paint animal fur. I do have one there now, but it need, it's it's not as elaborate as I'd like to have it. I'd like to have it more detailed. Okay, I'm going to take that tape off. Good. That looks nice. Nice straight line there. Nice. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to take our flat brush and I'm going to make sure it's clean. I'm going to add, that's a bristle, so I'm, I'm going to add white and some blue. You can use a, a bristle or a synthetic, okay, because where you, you can see where you're using mostly small flat brushes and either one is fine except for when you're tapping, all right? If you're tapping, make sure to use your bristle. If you're doing the water, the sky, you can use a synthetic brush. So just paint on some of your blue paint, mostly white though, because I just want to have, because we're going to be covering up some of that with our reflections of our trees and our cabin, so we don't need to worry about being totally blue. We'll have uh, 
long as it looks like just a reflection from the sky and then you got a reflection from the cabin and the trees and some grass so we just need a nice light blue yeah there we go try to get it under that straight line there that nice little horizon line even though I'm probably gonna put grass there <laughs> but the way I paint sometimes I change my mind you know I might have a nice straight horizon line and then if I'm doing grass or I'm doing water I might end up coming up over the horizon line with some waves or some grass so but it's always nice to have uh, a plan that way you get some idea it's nice to have a plan but you don't want to really stick to it if you don't want to you want to paint loose you want to put in whatever you feel like you want to make things and you want to change things around so it's nice to have a plan what you're going to do and have a reference photo so you can see the colors and the shapes but if you want to make changes when you're painting that's what you should do it's more fun because you've got control then see the photo is not controlling you or the brush is not controlling you you're doing all the, you're the one that's in control and that's when you have fun with your painting it's the same with your life if you're in control of you, your life you're much happier if you take if you're if you're the one that controls your life you are the one that's going to be the happiest Now, let's tap into some green and a little, some yellow and tap on some highlights on top of that one up there. I'm just getting started on that, so just tap around a little bit just to get it started and get a little more texture into your grass area. See, that's the bristle brush and the bristles are open. Uh, so you can see the top one's not ready yet but you can see the bottom grass looks really textured it almost looks realistic so now i'm going to tap in some yellow and some red with a little bit of an orangey color and then i'm going to tap on the top i really want to highlight that nicely when you're tapping it on make sure you keep some of your dark okay tap around try not to lose all your dark a little more yellow a little more red and tap 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 see how it's starting to uh, lighten up see how I that dark underpainting I had there really gives it a nice look to it because now you have shadows under what you're tapping on I mean you could tap on your lights first if you wanted to and tap dark in between it but I find it this way much easier and you can still if you put on too much of the light and you lost your dark you can tap back in just some of your darks So, you know everybody likes to do paintings their way some might want to put on the darks after it's entirely up to you but just use these tutorials to help guide you along show you what I do and then you'll find your own way there we go I know you might find it a little hard at the beginning if you're a total beginner I know it's it's uh, I've went through it for years and I'm still learning I still you know I want to get better and I try my best to I practice and I keep doing videos and and I, I look at other videos I have art books and I keep trying to learn more and more and more because it's a lifelong learning process so it's a lot of fun and the better you get at it the more fun it is because in the beginning it might be a little frustrating but for some people they have fun with it they don't worry about it if it's fantastic or it's perfect or they just paint along and and they create something on the canvas and they're quite happy with it and that's 
That's the way it should be. It shouldn't be stressful. I'm not saying you won't get stressed out about certain things, because I, I have, and especially when I'm doing videos, I have to try and make my paintings look presentable and show you good techniques. And there's times I get frustrated when my brush won't do what I want it to do. <laughs> So here I am drawing out, I'm using, uh, you can use a colored pencil, but I'd rather use a watercolor pencil because if you make a mistake, you can wipe it off with a bit of a damp tissue. So I'm just drawing out where I want my trees, just making lines, just to put, put a composition where I want it. So you can draw your composition on top of your background. And then I'm going to draw out my little cabin. It's just a matter of uh, two lines on top is like an upside down V or like you're going to make a letter A and then two straight lines down and that's it. And you paint in the rest, you just paint it in and add your door. You don't need to draw out your door. You can use your brush to make your door and a little window. So it's just a matter of drawing it out so you can tell how big it is, how big you want it and where you want it in your painting. So that's basically what we're doing there, okay? Just getting the composition. So whenever you're trying to get a composition, it's better to draw it out either with paint or color, watercolor pencil or chalk. There's the straight lines. So I'm just making the trees and the branches. That way, I can get the shape of the tree that I want. I'm trying to make cedar trees today. So I'll just take my branches off my trunk and I'll move them around to a similar shape, what I think the tree would be. Now you can, you can tap on your uh, tree leaves first if you want to, and then put your trunks in after. But you might get your tree confused you may not be able to get um, get the shape that you're looking for so I find this helps me get a better shape to my trees I'm doing it with pencil you can do it faster and uh, when you go over it with your paintbrush it makes it so much faster and easier if you did everything with your paintbrush, say if you put on your trunk and your branches with your paintbrushes and you didn't like it, then your paint is wet, it's going to mix in with your, the rest of your painting and then it's going to be a real mess. So this way you can avoid a real mess and you can make changes. So now I'm getting my flat brush out and that's a small flat brush, it's my synthetic and I'm going to paint the the house with red and brown okay so red you can use a burnt umber and um, crimson red or red whatever color whatever red you got there is fine as long as you add a bit of burnt umber to it to darken it a bit make kind of a burgundy color So just fill it in. Let's pick up some more paint. There we go. Now we'll just fill in the spots so you can make it look like a cabin. Just use your chiseled ledge brush to get the edges there. So the chiseled edge will go on those lines for you. I've, I've had people say, I can't stay inside the lines. It's probably because of your brush. And if you have a really hard time staying inside your lines, use tape. And that way we'll, you'll be able to get your lines nice and straight like I did with the horizon line. 
how you're going to do your trunk for your tree which is just a brown just a dark brown really dark brown if you don't have dark brown just use the darkest brown you have and add a little bit of black to it if you want or blue just to darken it up probably blue be nice if you can avoid black altogether that's fine I mean I use black in some of my paintings but if you use black it might it might fade your paint to your colors um, make your paint look flat but if you add colors to your black like blues reds green whatever you know just add some color to your black and that will give it a, a nicer feel to your black so there's the uh, little trunks and the trunks and the branches so I'm not really worried too much you know if they're too big because I'm gonna be putting the trees over those the tree leaves but they're gonna help me see I'm trying to get the shape of the tree that's why they look strange <laughs> but I'm just trying to get a shape what I think it might uh, it might help me get the shape of the tree looks like a little trunk going up that way coming off the tree all right and then we'll do the other tree so just use the chisel edge of your brush and move it up and down so that you can get a nice little trunk so these are brush strokes that you're using like I say people are asking about brush strokes so everything you are just depending on what your subject is some of your strokes are just short quick strokes like I'm doing here just short quick strokes to get those little branches and I used a longer stroke when I was doing the trunk right so it's a lot to learn I know and it's not only just landscapes then when you turn when you start a seascape a seascape it's different strokes different paints different brushes again different composition you know so it, it's impossible to learn a, a lot of stuff in very short time it takes years because you can paint one tree and you get it perfect but then you got a dozen other different types of trees to do and there are different types or different colors or different brushes to use so you have to learn that but as you the more you do the easier it gets and then when you come across a new painting then it's like almost like starting all over again because <laughs> you have to decide on the brushes and the colors and the composition and the focal point but um, see how I'm just tapping on my tree and I'm just looking I'm just going over those little branches that I came off the trunk and I'm following those and that's helping me get the shape that I'm looking for there we go see so I'm just dabbing at it tapping at it with my green paint dark green as you can see I always start off with a darker color first dark green just dark green I probably added a bit of pelly yeah I think I add a bit of burnt sienna to that green so you can add a little bit of red or burnt sienna a little bit of blue to keep it a really dark green so I'm trying to get the shape there This tree is a little pudgier than the other one it's got more of a round look to it I was trying to get the shape something like the other one but I kind of went out a little bit too much to the side there but you make your tree uh, look up some cedar trees and cedar shapes and cedar shapes <laughs> hmm. and um, follow their shapes now you can make whatever countries you want there it can be an apple tree it can be 
it can be a tree without any leaves at all. You can make that into a little, little, I don't know, a little fall scene or spring, whatever, whatever season you want. It's only a matter of doing the same thing, but just um, looking up the different kinds of trees and then adding whatever you want there. So I'm adding some yellow to my green, that green, dark green I made. I'm adding some yellow to that so that I can lighten up that tree. And I'm lightening up on the right hand side as you can see because the sun is shining in. I must have picked the right side. So I picked the right side that the sun is coming in. So the right side of the tree, there would be light. And on the other side, there would be shadow. Okay, so you leave the shadow side of the tree on the left. So you don't tap into that as much. Just leave that dark. And that's what helps bring your paintings to life. Helps with realism. Realism is, is about different values of color. And that's what brings out your shapes. It makes it look real. The shape looks real. And so if you add three, three values, of paint. So with these trees we got the dark value and we're now doing the medium value and then if I add a bit of white to my yellow then I'll have my highlights or my third value. Now you can have more than three values. You can have a dark value and you can have a medium, a dark medium value and a medium value and then a, a light value, a medium light value and a highlight. So you can have, you know, depending on what you're painting, and when you tap, 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 make sure you try to leave behind what you are tapping over. So you just you spread it out more. You don't, you don't want to lose what you already put there. You're trying to keep those three, three values of color. And that's what makes it, see how it looks like a tree? It looks like, you know, uh, a roundness. It shows the roundness to it. Shows like it might have some leaves. So if you only had just a dark green on there, it would look like just a, a an object. You wouldn't even know what it was if you if you had a close up and you didn't see the trunk. You'd be like, is that a ball of fur? <laughs> see, is that pretty? Now that's nice. See how nice those trees are? It's because of three values. And that's all there is. I have a video called Three Values to Painting Everything or Anything. So if you want all the uh, if I remember, I'll put the link in the bottom. If you if you if you need the link to anything I mention, then just let me know. Email me at alisonpryor at yahoo.com and I'll send you the link to other videos that I have that may help you. So if you want the video to three values, three steps to painting anything three steps which is the three values what I'm talking about so I show you some uh, examples but just try it paint a round circle start off with a dark color um, and then add some uh, a medium color on top so say if you're doing let's say if you're doing an apple We'll start off with dark red first. So put on your, now apples, sir, you can do uh, both ways, but just say, well, for the sake of the three values, starting with the dark, you could start with a dark apple, a darker red, and then you can add a lighter red when it dries. When you're doing layers of paint, you have to let the first layer dry first, and then you start your second layer and then that's a lighter layer and then you can put another lighter layer on and it'll be on top you have to let some of your darks show through and then you can add some of your highlights so I, I got a video on how to paint an apple it would be more better to explain it to you that way so what I'm doing here is I'm just touching up my cabin just adding another coat because uh, it looked like it needed a second coat so anything you need to do with the cabin, you can add shadows or under the roof there. You can uh, do a second coat and then you can put on your, I'm just using my flat brush. 
If you see me punching and, and tapping, that means I'm using my bristle brush. If you see me just doing soft areas like this, I try to use my chiseled edge brush so I can get to those edges there, those straight edges. I don't want to go outside the lines. See, that's my flat brush. Just go underneath there. And uh, just put some black on your brush and just pull down. Touch and pull down. You got your little door that fast. And you can put a little window on top. Same thing. Just a little touch. Just touch with your very dark paint. Try to make it as black as you can by, like I said, either going into your black or brown and blue. Good. Now you're going to make the reflection. So just draw it out with your brush. You don't need to draw it out with a pencil this time or, or anything. Just paint it in. So you have the top one to guide you. So just paint it in with a bit of red. You can do two coats down there too if you want. I left a bit of a distance there between the land and the cabin because I'm going to put a little bit more grass there. Like a little lip. There we go. There we go. So put a second coat on there. Just adding a reflection to the trees. And then I'm just going to add a few little lines of like water lines just to go over to make it look like it's underwater. And I'm tapping into some green again so I can get the trees on top there, the reflection, a little bit of trees in the water, just a dark green to get it started. There we go. Just it's just a a reflection, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, and I'm just thinking maybe that's just the bottom of the tree there because I'm trying to see the length of the trunk so it'll match. But the tree is um, going behind that that little piece of land there, so we don't need we only need a little piece showing there as if it was the part of the tree. There we go. And I'm tapping with my bristle. Like I said, every time you see me tap, 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 or if I'm doing any grass or trees, you'll know that I'm using a bristle brush, okay? It also depends on using your brushes. I might say, well, I use bristle brushes for my trees or for punching or for tapping. But some people, they might want to use a softer brush to get a different kind of look. So it depends on what your style is and what kind of look you like. You look you like. <laughs> but you know, um, there's no wrong or right in art. It's like what you want, what you want to accomplish. And at this point, if you're brand new, you don't know because you don't know what the brushes can do and you don't know what they're going to look like. So following along with tutorials will give you a head start. And then you'll finally say, you know, I don't want to tap, tap, tap and use a bristle brush. I think I'll make my trees with um, a sponge or maybe I'll use a, 
a chiseled edge brush or, or a synthetic brush or even a watercolor brush whatever works whatever I, and I might get some different looking trees by using different brushes you make an abstract and whatever you want to do I'm just using a liner brush here to make some tall grasses here just so I can get some flower get them ready for flowers so just use some uh, white with a bit of green paint to lighten them up so you can see them on top of the darker grass There we go. All right, so we'll keep doing that for a little while so we can get as much of the grasses in there. And you can even add a bit of color to them if you want. You can add like a little bit of red or a little bit of green or with your yellows and but we're going to be tapping on some flowers now in a little while and we're getting close to being done actually well a little bit still have a bit of work to do yet depend like i say it depends on how long it takes you to do a painting some people say well how long does it take you to do a painting well it depends on the detail depends on what you want to put in it um Like I say, it depends on what you want to do with it and what what you're putting in it. So here we go. Just keep tapping on those little flowers. Tap on different colors, just with your bristle brush. Just keep tapping the flowers. Pick up any colors you want, greens, reds, blues. Add a little bit of white to your colors. You don't even have to clean your brush because you're going to get all kinds of really nice colors. Try to distribute them so that there's not too much red in one spot and there's not too much yellow in one to se separate them out. Unless you want all red or all yellow. But if you're having different colors, try to distribute them so that there's reds in the, the right, middle, and left. And then you can add your yellows around the same areas and you just continue with different colors. But just don't make all reds in one spot and then all yellows in another spot and all blues in another spot. It won't look as nice. So I'm just using some highlights here on top of my grass up there. It's a bit of yellow and white. Got a dirty brush there, so I got a few mixture of a few colors there mixed in probably, but just make sure it's more yellow and white. Maybe a little bit of red, just to brighten it up. I got my red there now. There we go. I'm just going to add a little bit of a light color to my cabin just so that it's not just a flat color, like just one color. Because like I say, you add two or three colors to a subject or an object and it helps bring it out more. So I'm just adding a little bit of little bit of color, pulling it on there and keeping the dark also. Alright, it's kind of like a highlight, I guess you call it. On that. Alright. There we go. And now I'm going to take my liner brush and I'm going to outline that door and window to bring it out more so you can see it. See? There we go. Just be careful and just go over the top of the dark and that will help you establish the door. See, and it brings it out more. You can see it more. It makes it even darker looking. I'm looking up at my reference photo here wondering what I'm doing there. <laughs> I 
I used a couple of reference photos for this and sort of um, mixed it up you know so you can you can look for several reference photos and you can put them all together and use bits and pieces out of each the only thing is you got to have enough experience I guess to figure out where the shadows go and everything but as long as you as long as you know where the light is coming from you should have no problems just just think where's the light coming from is it coming from the right or to the left from the left um, you know that's the that's the biggest thing there that that helps you a lot then to establish where the light should go on the trees or the grass or wherever that's pretty isn't it it's nice very simple simple little painting we're just going to add a little bit of grass behind that cabin there we're just going to add a few bushes there and we'll highlight them and um, that'll give a little more you can put different things in it that you want if you want some birds in the sky or if you want uh, I don't know maybe some figures uh, in the in, by the cabin you know someone on a bike or something like that or whatever you want you know it's up to you more trees on the side of the house it's uh, the cabin but I'm just putting little bushes there that's all probably one more tree on that side might have balanced it out a little bit better I didn't think about it till after it was done and I was thinking maybe I should put something on that other side also or if I had to move the cabin over more to the right it probably would have because it's a little bit empty over to the right there so I would say if you want to you can add a little bit of taller bushes or you can add a, probably another tree there but one I think would be enough if you add too many trees it might just take away from your cabin because the cabin in my mind is the focal point because my eye is going right to the cabin and then it moves around to the trees and comes back over to the cabin so what's happening is I can see it now is that my eye and your eye and anybody who's looking at that painting their eye goes to the cabin then it moves over to the trees and comes down around the flowers and then goes back to the cabin so there's nothing on the right side to track their eye so really I should have put something over on that side so I just want to point it out to you because I am trying to teach you how to paint or how to make a composition and I don't want to steer you in the wrong direction so after it was all finished I realized after you know this really needs something on the right hand side so rather than do another video I'm just going to put this one to you and let you know that you can put something on that right hand side like I said another tree maybe a fence um, maybe some birds up in the sky might uh, something just something over there that will offset that emptiness over there okay but you still don't want to have it um, too much going on you don't want it to be you know take away from the focal point either so it's decisions that you have to make to see what looks best I'm thinking that something over there would help it would make it look nice you can look at other reference photos and see what they did did they put a tree on the other side look up cabins and see where the trees are you know so you just do the same thing you tap on as if you're tapping on grass with your bristle brush and um, put some more highlights on your grass there and then put highlights on those bushes behind the cabin just by adding yellow and white maybe a little bit of red if you want to put whatever colors you want in as long as it's nice and bright and that will give you your third value okay so that's pretty ah that's really nice I hope you like it I hope you learned a lot and I hope you learned about brush strokes and a little bit of color mixing and reflections and so it came out really nice I'll see you in the next video bye